Hey everyone, so this session is all about virtual labs and just running through the configuration of that. So you give it a name, you then choose your vSphere environment or your Hyper-V environment as to where you want to run this lab, i.e. where do you want to run your Shore backup jobs in, where are the resources. You pick your resource pool and your folder. Now you can have existing files and folders in there. Uh, and then choose somewhere to have like a bit of scratch media, write cache. Then we get on to, well, okay, so the proxy appliance that lives within that resource group that does all of the control from internal and external. Well, that needs a network because it's going to bridge the gap between production that we know as production and the isolated environment with inside of the, the virtual lab or the isolated environment. So here, this could be DHCP. Obviously, if you've got DHCP on your production network, great stuff. Um, you could use that, but I want to know every time it's being used what my proxy uh, appliance IP address is. So just quickly run through that. And again, we're going to add our DNS in here. Everyone's seen this, that if anyone's ever done anything remotely simple with the Windows networking stack, then you've definitely seen similar similar interfaces. Now this is where the confusion always comes in. So basic single is going to give you the option to just really as is now, it's just going to go away, it's going to deploy that proxy appliance. And it's going to allow you to leverage that. And there's not going to be really any other specific isolated networks or anything along them lines, then you've got advanced single host. And then you've got advanced multi host, which allows us to use the distributed virtual switch. So most of the time, you're always going to use that middle one unless you're going to want or need to span over multiple hosts. So most common is this one. So and they look very much the same. So what we first need to do here is we need to define what the production network is and you can go and browse and you can get that. And if we go and look at our host or our environment that we're running on, you can go and see right our VM network is our production network in this instance. Now you can browse as we saw in here, you can go and browse and you'll get that same drop down. And then you need to define the isolated network. Now here, this is when this is about choosing the isolated network to connect to this VNIC. This is about the machines inside of the, the virtual network. And what the common so if you're going to be using sure backup to test your domain controller, your domain controller will have a default gateway. That default gateway needs to reside here as well. So it needs to have that IP address, it needs to have the same net mask. And then also take note of this IP address at the bottom. This is how you're going to be able to interact if you decide to use it as a sandbox environment. And then you'd add multiple ones of those if you wanted to have um, or if you had additional networks on your virtual machines. What the static mapping does is by default, the VBR server is allowing you to get into that machine. So there's already a route created from your VBR server. If you want a static route, say your laptop, then that's when you'll you will um, you add in your IP address and where you're going within that lab so that the route can be created on the virtual lab proxy appliance. Then what you're going to see here is it de actually deploys that virtual lab appliance creating all the virtual virtual switches. So that isolated virtual switch. So you very much saw before we deployed this, you saw the VM network, which in our in the demo purposes, that's our live environment. What we're going to do is we're going to go and create another virtual switch a, a standard switch, which is called VM network or lab or virtual lab. We'll see it shortly. And what that's going to do is that's where all of your virtual machines that are going to be running from your backup or backup location or storage snapshots or replicas, well, that's where the uh, that's where they go. That's where the network is going to be connected, because obviously you don't want it connecting to your production. But the, the proxy does exactly that it proxies between the production and the isolated environment It allows us to do the test that we need to do. So obviously, that's finished, it registers that proxy appliance, then if we go and jump back into our vSphere environment, we're going to then see that newly created um, network in there as well.
So in here you see the proxy appliance. And job done.